Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rumors about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Suspect shot killed Wednesday during Central West End break-in. A suspect was shot and killed Wednesday morning during a break-in at a Masonic Lodge in Central West End. According to the St. Louis Police Department, the break-in happened just before 4 a.m. at a Tuscan Lodge located at 5015 Westminster Place, blocks away from Forest Park. Police say that Janan Howard, 48 years old, broke into the lodge and made his way upstairs. The break-in triggered the building's alarm, which woke up a resident in the apartment on the third floor. The 37-year-old resident went down a flight of stairs and confronted the suspect on the second floor and shot him. Police found Howard shot and wounded on the bathroom floor. He later died at the scene. Police told Five on Your Side the resident is a member of the Masonic Order. He called the police after the shooting and is cooperating with the investigation. In the weekly police news briefing Wednesday afternoon, police told Five on Your Side they didn't have information at this time on whether Howard was armed or not. No matter what the facts is, the investigation will be presented to the circuit attorney. Boy, you gotta be careful who crib you run up in. Somebody might give your ass that smoke. And shot and killed an intruder who was breaking into his building. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Ann Allred. And I'm Mike Bush. The deadly shooting happened early this morning at a Masonic Lodge on Westminster Place along Kings Highway in the Central West End. The lodge is on the first floor and people live in apartments upstairs. Five on your side, Justina Cornell is there live with the latest. Shooting happened before four this morning and police say the shooter lived in this historic building. A warning sign is right next to this Masonic Lodge. It's a sign people see on Westminster Place saying to call police for any suspicious activity. And police did arrive here early Wednesday morning to the Tuscan Lodge number 360. We're told people live above the meeting place. According to police, a 37-year-old resident woke up to the building's burglary alarm going off shortly before 4. The victim armed himself and began searching the building. When he was confronted by a male suspect in his 40s, the victim fired shots, striking the suspect, who is pronounced deceased at the scene. Police told Five on Your Side the resident is a member of the Masonic Order. Wednesday afternoon, police couldn't share if the intruder was armed or not. No matter what, the facts of this investigation will be presented to the circuit attorney. Whether or not ultimately they decide to issue any charges is uh, in their purview. Five on Your Side spoke to St. Louis University law professor Anders Walker about Missouri's Castle Doctrine. So the Castle Doctrine protects homeowners from intruders. If someone breaks into your home and you have a reasonable fear you're going to get hurt, you can use lethal force. And whether the burglar is armed or not doesn't really matter. If someone's in your house and it's dark, you're probably going to be scared. Walker explained Missouri has one of the most expansive castle doctrines in the country. Some states, you have to have a fear that you could be seriously injured or killed. Not in Missouri, just a fear of any injury. And that seems to be the case here. We did reach out to the organization, but we have not heard back. Now, police say this is still an active investigation. If you have any information, you can contact Crime Stoppers at 866-371-TIPS. Reporting in the Central West End, Christina Cornell, five on your side. Yeah, so you see how they getting down out there in St. Louis. Boy, that's why it's good to have a home defense weapon. You got to have a strap. It was, by the time you was going to call the police, the man was already inside. Boy, you had to handle that. I keep the strap at the crib. You know, home defense is a must out here these days, especially these days. 2024, shit looking crazy already. It's like a different home invasion, a different burglary every other goddamn day, every other second. More people need to arm themselves. If a lot of people get met with brute force, they won't be out here doing this dumb shit. So people, boys, stay safe and stay dangerous, right? Because if you run up in my crib, your ass going to be sleeping next to Janard. 
Man, this your boy Smoke Tales, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Be hate. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rulers about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good? This your boy Smoke Tales, man. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Two killed in confrontation at Denver construction site. Two people were shot and killed during the confrontation with a construction site manager in Southwest Denver Sunday, the Denver Police Department said. Police said it happened around 1.30 p.m. at a commercial construction site in the area of Bellevue Avenue and Wadsworth Boulevard. It appears that a manager arrived at the location and found two unauthorized people inside, possibly burglarizing the location. Police said a confrontation between the two unauthorized people and the site manager occurred during which the site manager was assaulted. The site manager pulled out a firearm and shot both individuals. Police said one individual who was shot, a man died on the scene, the other one, a woman, was taken to the hospital where she later died. Their names have not been released yet. Police said the site manager remained on the scene and is cooperating with the investigation. They said no arrests have been made. Yeah, lucky he had the strap on him. See, cause as soon as he entered, entered the door, they just bum rushed the man and started swinging all on him. Boy, it's always better to have it on you just in case. In this case, he needed it. New here at five neighboring businesses sounding off after a shooting that killed two people at a South Denver construction site yesterday. And investigators suspect that a manager at that construction site caught the two burglarizing the place. So the manager might have been shot or might have shot them both when they reportedly attacked him during a confrontation. Fox 31's we sent that in is on it live talking to nearby businesses about how break ins could have been a problem in that area already. Vicente. Tell you, and we've also been talking to police. We're outside the police department this afternoon. They're telling us that this person that was involved in this shooting has been cooperating so far. They're saying when this manager got to that location, he walked in and found these two people possibly burglarizing the place. An unexpected sight in the middle of a Sunday afternoon at this shopping center at South Wadsworth in West Bellevue. Two suspected burglars shot and killed at a construction site behind this building. Neighboring businesses are concerned. And at first it was, I mean, it's shocking, um, but also we're kind of like it's kind of been going down that road the last little bit, so it's not super surprising. Police say a site manager arrived and found a man and woman possibly burglarizing the place. We're told that manager was assaulted before he began shooting. Fox 31 legal analyst Christopher Decker says that alleged attack plays a key role in the investigation. The investigators here will determine whether or not the individual who shot these two people and killed them was legally justified in doing so. Break-ins here, businesses say, are not uncommon, but nothing like Sunday shooting has happened here before. On New Year's Day, we had like a break-in. Um, someone just broke multiple doors around the store. It's really shocking. What the two people were trying to allegedly steal is not clear. David Williams, who works at a local flower shop, says his place has been broken into as well. Uh, the last, yeah, I'd say year, year and a half, we've really noticed um, more suspicious activity, I guess you could say, around the building. There are a number of signs saying cameras are monitoring the site, but what role they might have played, if any, in catching the suspected burglars is not clear. Police telling us that no one's been arrested in this case. We also talked to the construction company that is in charge of this site. They say they had no comment at this time because there's an ongoing investigation. Live outside the police department, downtown Denver, Vicente Arenas, Fox 31. Yeah, man, so you see how they getting down out there in Denver. 
you seen the other people who own they stoves over there the chinese man stove had them been broken into the other man he say oh well he not surprised somebody didn't got their ass lit up he looking crazy he need to have a gun on them too they tried to fight the man see they ain't want to go to jail if he came in there oh lay down lay that shit down they ain't want to do all that they want to try to ball rush the man to beat the man up not knowing that he had the pistol on and boy once once you get out number and it's two to one you can give it to a bitch then coming on the construction site trying to steal and fucked around and got your hard hat peeled back man it's your boy smoke tails man until next time you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. A man attempting to rob a jewelry store is shot by an employee inside. It was all captured on surveillance cameras inside and outside of that store. CBS 2's Asal Rezai reports from Jewelers Row in the Loop. Chicago police covering two crime scenes in this area. It started at this jewelry store behind me. The suspect running out after being shot and then making his way up to those stairs up to the CTA platform. A usually busy Saturday morning in the loop turns chaotic at 1 North Wabash Avenue just before 11 o'clock. Police lights quickly taking over the scene. Crime tape also blocking off parts of the CTA platform just steps away. Surveillance video from inside the store shows the suspect wearing a red sweatshirt, walking around for about a minute before he takes off running towards the entrance. In this closer angle, you can see him begin to bash in a glass case. That's when the employee at the far left reaches behind the counter, begins shooting at the suspect before he tries to get away. Footage from outside the store shows him stumbling out, then running back in to grab what appears to be a small bag before he takes off up the CTA stairs. Police say shortly after, he was placed into custody and taken to the hospital for a gunshot wound. They say he is in stable condition. We're told the employee is a FOID card holder. But I think to just throw it all on the, all on the responsibility of the business owners or the residences is really not the right way to go. Christine has lived in a neighboring building for about 14 years. She says she wants to see more police in the area as she's concerned with the recent spike in crime she's seen. But the crime is just escalating and it's getting worse and worse. We had kids killed a few weeks ago. Now this armed robbery or at least a, a gun was involved at some point. Um, but it's, um, it's a shame. It's a shame. I'm told by security inside the employee that opened fire is currently in custody as Chicago police continue their investigation. At this time, charges against the robbery suspect are pending. I'm reporting in the loop. Asal Rezai, CBS 2 News. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rules about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope he got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Man charged with murder coach teen and robbery gone wrong. An 18-year-old male has been charged in the connection with a fatal shooting that took place in an attempted robbery in Houston. Larry Holmes, 18-year-old of Houston, Texas, is facing murder charges at the 148th State District Court following the fatal shooting of a male at an apartment complex on the Lime Street on December 12th. The victim, identified as 16-year-old Edwin Quinones, was found with multiple gunshot wounds inside of an elevator at the complex. According to the Houston Police Department, patrol officers responded to a shooting call at the complex. Security officers reported hearing multiple gunshots, and Quinones was subsequently found deceased in the elevator by Houston Fire Department paramedics. Witnesses reported seeing two men believed to be in their early 20s fleeing from the elevator and leaving the complex. 
Further investigation revealed that Quinones was attempting to commit a robbery when he was shot during the struggle in the elevator. Holmes was identified as an accomplice to Quinones and has been charged for his role in the incident. Holmes was arrested last Friday by the Houston Police Department and was booked in the Harris County Jail. I'm telling you, y'all young cats out here tripping, boy. I don't know what this man would think about. Ran up in that elevator. Psh. Congratulations, you played yourself. Turn now to an 18-year-old who's been charged with murder in a bizarre case where a 16-year-old was killed. Larry Holmes wasn't there when Edwin Quinones was shot, but authorities believe they still can hold him responsible. They say Holmes coached 16-year-old Quinones on how to commit armed robbery, and that is why Quinones reportedly was killed at the Haven at Elgin Student Apartments. Liliana Pearson is live from outside the apartments where that shooting happened. Liliana, the big question here, how is Holmes facing murder charges if he wasn't even there for the shooting? Yeah, it's a really important question. And as you mentioned, we know that Holmes was supposedly coaching Quinones on how to commit armed robbery. We're told that Quinones was attempting to do just that. He was in an elevator when he was attempting to rob people. They pulled out their own gun, shooting him and killing him. Now the Harris County DA is telling us that they're holding Holmes responsible for the murder through something called the law of parties. And the law of parties allows somebody to be held for someone else's crimes under three circumstances circumstances. First, if you cause or help an innocent person engage in crime. Second, if you intentionally help, encourage, or direct someone to commit or attempt to commit a crime. And finally, if you know a crime is going to happen and you make no effort to stop it. Because Holmes coached Quinones how to commit armed robbery and Quinones was killed in the process, Holmes is now responsible for the death, despite him not even being there at the time of the crime. Residents at the apartment building say they're glad to hear about the new charges, but they're still wary around the building. It doesn't really make me feel any safer, per se, because they still haven't found the individual who committed the actual murder itself. And as somebody who lives here, this happened here. The elevator that it happened in is still shut down. It's just one of those things that, like, my parents are, like, trying to get me to end my lease here and come home. Holmes was given a $275,000 bond. He's still in jail. I'm Liliana Pearson, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Yeah, man, so you see how they getting down out there in Houston. You already know how Texas do. This man Holmes was manipulating this man, King Yonez. Out here running this boot game on this man, setting him up to fail and crash out. He young listening to this other young dumb motherfucker, right? This is why you got to be careful of the company you keep, right? You hang around and, and start sitting around and chilling with shit piles, you going to start smelling like a shit pile. So you young dudes out here need to pay attention to what's going on out here. People ain't fucking around with y'all out here running around here crashing out about this dumb shit. I don't know what y'all got going on. You can tell y'all ain't had no daddy at the crib. Now this man Holmes, he going, he locked up forever. And this nigga Quinones, he stankin'. Trying to rob dude Nam in the elevator and took that bitch straight up to the upper room. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. The fuck out here hate. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rooting about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope he got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Homeowner armed with shotgun helps police in Fresno. Three in custody. Police arrested three suspects on Wednesday after they received the report of someone brandishing a handgun at a person. The call came in around 10.30 a.m. at Blackstone and McKinley Avenue 
in Fresno. A description of the vehicle and the suspects were called out over the radio and the Fresno patrol officer spotted the multicolored Mercedes. He began following as more units got behind him on Highway 41. The driver got off at Ashland Avenue and went into a neighborhood but would not stop for the police. The driver eventually stopped and all three suspects ran in different directions, jumping fences, running along the highway and hiding. While police were searching, they were called by a man saying he was holding two suspects at gunpoint in his garage. Police got to the house and one of the suspects was arrested. The other one ran away. Officers were able to catch the second guy in the backyard. A third suspect was high and nearby and did not want to come out, so they sent the canine in to get him. The man was treated by paramedics and taken into custody. Police say an extended magazine was found near the car but no gun. The wife of the man who helped police catch the suspects asked to remain anonymous out of fear of retaliation. She says neighbors called her and say they saw men running into their property. She wasn't home so she called her husband who was. He held them there until the police arrived. She said the third suspect was hiding under a boat at her neighbor's house. Her husband said he was just doing what he needed to do to protect their two babies. Since then, neighbors are keeping a close eye out around the block hoping that the man don't come back again to retaliate. Brandishing guns on people, upping guns on people. Boy, that's a, that's a quick way to get your ass burnt. City tonight, after Fresno police say two of them picked the wrong garage to hide from officers following a chase. Police say they were on the run after flashing a gun at someone this morning. Well, little did they realize a homeowner would hold them at gunpoint until police arrived. Now, the man's wife tells our reporter, Myra Franco, that the third suspect hid out next door. Myra joins us live now. And all right, Myra, how did they know those men were in the house? Did they see them dash back there? Yeah, Monty lives a homeowner's wife tells me a neighbor called her to say she saw men run onto their property. She wasn't home, so she called her husband, who was. The wife asked not to show her face out of fear of retaliation. A wild police chase off Highway 41 near Ashton Avenue in Fresno Wednesday morning after police say three men ditched a car and ran onto the highway to escape officers, only for two of them to end up being held at gunpoint by a homeowner. His wife wasn't home at the time, but watched it all go down from her ring camera. All I hear is him telling them, get out, get out, I have kids here, get out, get out. He had said that one froze up, one automatically hit the floor and was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know, like, don't shoot. And um, yeah, I don't know, like, he just was like, had them held there until the cops came. I'm glad he didn't just shoot first because, you know, he did see they were a little bit younger and he was like, I felt bad, you know, but at the same time, my kids are here. Her husband called police and they arrived shortly after. One of the men was arrested, another bailed, but she got home in time to catch his arrest. As I was pulling up, uh, they were getting the guy um, on the grass. The third suspect hid under a boat at a neighbor's house. A canine was sent out to get him. That man was treated by paramedics and was taken into custody. Now neighbors are keeping a close eye around the block, hoping the men don't come back again to retaliate. She says under the circumstances, so many things could have gone wrong. Her husband says he was just doing what he needed to do to protect their two babies. Liz Monty, the neighbors are really looking out for each other after this. When we stopped by hoping to get that interview, she tells us neighbors even called to check on her. Always oh, nice to have neighbors like that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Myra. Police tell us an extended magazine was found in the car, but no gun. As soon as we learn more information about this case, we will let you know. Yeah, man. So you see how they getting down out there at Fresno. California, one of the hardest places to get a gun license there is besides New York, when the crime is out of control on that end. I tell you this, he a better man than me, because I would have fucked around and let it go on you. Coming inside of my house while the kids in there, you liable to got your ass laid down right there fucking around with me. The man had sympathy for y'all because he seen y'all was young, right? But every, every homeowner wouldn't have felt that way. I tell you what, that canine came back down to that boat and chewed his ass up. Now he laid out all on the stretcher looking like he in agony. You put yourself in this situation. Be held accountable for your actions. Flash and gun. But when that man pulled that shotgun, they saw their life flash before their eyes. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, you never catch me without mine. Without mine.
You never catch me without mine. Without mine. You never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Before, hate. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rooting about how they gonna rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Man dies after shooting in Kent on King County Metro bus. A 29-year-old man died in Kent after a shooting on the King County Metro bus Friday afternoon. Officers responded about 1 p.m. to a 911 call about a shooting that had occurred on a Metro bus while it was traveling through Kent. According to a February Kent police news release, the bus had stopped in the 200 block off of Central Avenue South. Officers found the 29-year-old man, residence unknown, had exited the bus with a gunshot wound. Officers in Puget Sound Fire personnel proceeded with life-saving efforts. The man died at the scene, according to the police. Officers simultaneously located the 35-year-old man, resident unknown, with minor injuries claiming to have been assaulted by the deceased man. According to the police, the initial information indicates that prior to being shot, the deceased male got onto the Metro bus and engaged in an altercation with the 35-year-old man. It is believed that the 35-year-old man shot the deceased once during the fight. The 35-year-old man is cooperating with investigators. Kent detectives responded to the scene and are investigating the sequence of events that led to this fatal shooting. The incident was contained to the moving bus and no other injuries have been reported. The relationship between the two men involved is unknown at this time. Well, I don't know what's wrong with you dudes out here thinking you could just put your hands on anybody, right? Obviously, that man had a reason for getting off and hitting you. He hit you. He ain't hit nobody else on the bus. Obviously, he knew what he was doing with that iron. Details this hour about a fatal shooting on a King County Metro bus. It happened in Kent along Central Avenue South. One man was killed. King Fire. Absolutely, and you'll hear more from that Good Samaritan in a few moments. But talk about a scary situation for everyone on board that bus. Can police say there was some type of altercation? One person pulled out a gun, shot another passenger. That shooting victim ran across the street to this tire shop behind me looking for help. Yeah, a little bit scary. Juan Costetta owns JC Central Tire Shop in Kent. He tells Fox 13 police caution tape, evidence markers, and a man running to his lot for help was the last thing he expected Friday afternoon. I see like somebody try to open the door, lay down in the floor, stand up and lay down right here. And uh, he said like, help, help me. And uh, one of my workers called 911. That man was a 29-year-old who police say ran from this King County Metro bus after being shot by another passenger on board. Multiple calls were made to 911, including from Juan's shop. I stayed outside, you know, and uh, say, hey, relax, and uh, we called 911 already. According to Kent Police, the shooting happened around 1 o'clock as the bus was traveling through Kent. Investigators say the 29-year-old got into a fight with another passenger, a 35-year-old man. That man reportedly pulled out a gun and fired a shot, striking the 29-year-old. The driver immediately pulled over near Central Avenue and East Gow Street. I'm glad that I'm not on the bus today. Bill Moran says he would have been on that bus had he not called out of work. He says violence on public transit is becoming all too common. I'm not surprised whatsoever. 20 years ago when I moved to Kent, I wasn't like this whatsoever. That's why I moved to Kent because it was safe. Friday's shooting has him rethinking riding the bus. King County Metro says there were 22 people on board. Luckily, no one else was hurt. Crews tried to save the 29-year-old victim's life, but he didn't survive. Juan says he tried to comfort him before paramedics arrived. I stay right here, say just uh, relax and somebody come to, to help you. And this shooting remains under investigation. Ken Police saying that the 35-year-old who pulled out that gun and fired it is cooperating. He also told police that the 25-year-old shooting 
victim assaulted him when he got on the bus. Of course, Kent police are investigating all these claims, plus looking at surveillance video from on board that bus. In Kent tonight, Dave Detling, Fox 13 News. Yeah, man, so you see how they getting down out there in Kent. The man was sitting on the bus, minding his own business. You get on the bus, come through the door, and you just start swinging on the man, right? Get into a fight with the man, swinging on the man. Now, obviously, they ain't, that's not justification for me to pull my weapon and shoot you, right? Just some type of fist fight. So you had to be doing something where my life was in danger, stomping on my head or some shit like that. Then that gave me justification to put one in you. Then the other man, the one of the witnesses, you see him. Oh, I'm glad I wasn't on the bus that day. It's dangerous on public transportation. It's dangerous everywhere. It, it, shit can go down anywhere. You can be in the middle of the Hamptons and shit can go down. Right? That's why you should keep that pistol on. Homeboy get on the bus and start swinging all on the man, assaulting the man, and fucked around and took a bus ride to hell. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time. You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rules about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope he got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Police hunt for armed suspects after Marysville shootout. Marysville police are continuing to try to identify two suspects on the run who were involved in the shootout that happened at a home on Saturday night. Officers responded to multiple 911 calls about the sounds of gunfire on 31st Drive Northeast near 84th Street Northeast. Police say three people arrived at the home in the red Chevy Camaro that had been stolen and confronted a homeowner. Police say both the homeowner and the suspects were armed and gunfire was exchanged between the parties. During the incident, multiple homes and vehicles were struck by gunfire. No one in these homes or in vehicles were injured. The three suspects fled, leading to an hours-long large-scale search with multiple canines and drones. Officers took one suspect into custody after the Arlington PD K-9 rigs located him several blocks away from the incident. He was suffering from a gunshot wound. One of the two remaining suspects, there's a credible description of one. A Hispanic man or a mixed race male in his 20s with a medium build about 5'10". At the time of the incident, he was wearing a bright red jacket and a black covering over his head and face, only exposing his eyes. It's unknown at this time if he was injured and unknown if these two remaining suspects left in the vehicle. After the initial shooting event, the suspects attempted to steal several vehicles and break into several homes. The suspects were successful in stealing a pickup truck from a nearby residence, which was recovered in the morning several blocks away and seized as evidence. One firearm was recovered during the initial search incident. Two additional firearms were recovered later in the day. Boy, they ran up on home team deep. They had a rifle, a pistol, riding in a stolen car. Boy, they either came to Jack Fool and knew who he was or knew what it was. But obviously, that man knew what it was too. Boy, you gotta keep it on you these days, man. Most of these dudes out here who be doing all this crime shit can't shoot worth a damn. Tonight, a Marysville neighborhood is on edge after a shootout between a homeowner and three suspects. And two of them are still on the run. Literally came out of nowhere. I mean, they came up into the garage, coming towards the garage. My husband saw them and protected his family. It all sparked an hours long manhunt. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm BD Sun. This put the cities of city of Marysville on high alert and police say three armed men approached a homeowner as he got home just after midnight. Then shots rang out in the 8400 block of 41st Drive Northeast. Cairo 7's Deborah Horn reports from Marysville where many neighbors are still nervous. 
The people who own this home tell us they have no idea why anyone would attack them, but they certainly were attacked. You can see what happened just after midnight Sunday. Pretty soon, it seemed that the entire neighborhood was under attack too. The sound of gunfire shattered the peace of this quiet Marysville neighborhood. A shootout between a homeowner and three armed men caught on surveillance camera arriving at his house. On this side, there's one coming with a rifle in his hands. His wife did not want to show her face for fear of retaliation. She showed us the surveillance video that captured the men creeping up to her home. Her husband could see them approaching. Is that gun right there? And that gun right there? Oh! That's your husband firing. That's my husband firing because they were coming up with and We have three kids in the house. A neighbor who lives a block away could hear it too. I actually looked out my front window and actually saw an individual in the primary road on 84th. Uh, and the individual was shooting northwest in this general direction where we're standing now. Had a, a rifle, shoulder mounted rifle. The suspects fled on foot, leaving behind a stolen vehicle. That sparked a manhunt that lasted for hours. This is the damage in the light of day. Several vehicles struck by gunfire, some windows reduced to shards of glass, bullet casings found just about everywhere. 15 rounds, they're coming with rifles. That's an AR-15 round. Yep. The woman whose house was targeted says she has no idea why. And these are not people you know. No, don't know any of them. And you didn't don't know have... who has any beef with us or who would, but they were clearly waiting for my husband for some reason. Yeah, and then they, and then once he fired at them, they fired at all of your neighbors. All of our cars, all of our neighbors, my, my daughter's window. Marysville police tell us they use drones and canine to track down these suspects. In fact, it was canine that helped them locate the one suspect they had in the custody just afternoon. That is when they were able to end the alert for everybody in this neighborhood. But of course, they left behind damage like you see here, but a lot of psychic damage too. Reporting in Marysville, Deborah Horn, Cairo 7. Yeah, so you see how they getting down out there in Marysville, man. Home team said they came, they had guns, zip ties. They looked like it was a, it looked like it was a takeover. Who knows what they was coming for? But who cares what they was coming for? They tried to run up in somebody's house. You got the right to defend yourself at the crib while you out the crib. Especially down here in Florida. You can stand your ground. Boy, you gotta keep it on you out here these days. I don't make the rules. I just live in the same world everybody else does. Crime getting out of control out here, man. It's better to have the shit and not need it. Nine times out of ten, you gonna need it out here. Fuck around how shit looking out here these days. If that man wouldn't have had no gun, he was ass out, right? It was three dudes. He was already out in them, but he was assed out, right? So you can keep your gun control and you can keep all that shit right there. Yeah, dude now came to his crib and jumped out on him, busting, trying to do a takeover. But somebody took their ass to the hospital. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Fuck with hate. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rulings about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Father describes firing back after 12 year old son shot while in the crossfire in Southwest Philadelphia. Philadelphia police are investigating the double shooting that left two people, including a 12 year old, injured on Tuesday. It happened just before 4 p.m. outside of an auto shop on the 3500 block of Lindbergh Boulevard in Southwest Philadelphia. Officers say a 12 year old suffered a grazed wound to his head and a 43 year old man had a gunshot wound to his back. 
the surveillance video of the incident showed that a shooter opened fire in the area. Moments later, another man is seen pulling out his gun and firing back. The second man is the father of the boy who was injured. He told Action News he was defending his son. Neighbors told Action News what they heard when the gunfire rang out. Officers told Action News that the 43-year-old man, who was a mechanic, was the target of this shoot. He was transported to Penn Presbyterian Medical Center and was listed in a critical but stable condition. Investigators believe that the 12-year-old was caught in the crossfire. No arrests have been made, but police say a weapon was recovered at the scene. Police are still searching for the shooter, talking about having your pistol on you at the right time. Right out of nowhere, you just get caught in the fucking crossfire of a shootout. Philadelphia off the chain, right? Lucky he had that pistol on him. His son got shot. I would have reacted the same way. A father is still shaken up over what can only be called a parent's nightmare. He was watching as his son was shot by a stray bullet in southwest Philadelphia. In the heat of the moment, he pulled his own weapon in a desperate attempt to protect his family. He's still processing it all this morning and speaking out about it only to Action News. Action News reporter Corey Davis is live at Penn Presbyterian Medical Center with his harrowing story. Good morning. Tam, good morning. The father is raising the question, what would you do if you were an innocent bystander caught up in the middle of, the shoot of a shooting? And in this case, the father decided to shoot back. His son right now uh, was treated and released from P Penn Presbyterian Hospital here after suffering a graze wound to the head. The father did not want to be identified, but he explains the chaos in the moment he saw his bleeding son. From out of nowhere, I hear like 10, 15, 20 gunshot from the back. You know, and uh, we, we all run inside the shop, and that's where I started discharging my weapon, too. Then the car that was shooting dive off, and I came outside looking for him. He came out from the left side of the shop. I see the blood on his face and everywhere on his body. And here's a look at the surveillance video from yesterday, just before 4 p.m. You'll see the father standing on the left side of the screen as people run for their lives from the gunshots coming from behind them. That's when the father says he returned fire in effort to protect his family. This is a mechanic shop at 54th and Lindbergh in southwest Philadelphia. Sources tell Action News they believe a 43-year-old mechanic was the target. That man was shot in the back. One of the bullets also grazed the father's 12-year-old son in the head. He, sa he saw his boy covered in blood and then rushed him to Penn Presbyterian Hospital where he was treated and released. The emotional trauma, however, is still lingering for everyone. Oh my God, I'm so hurt right now. It's, I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna heal from this. I'm still traumatized right now. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm lost of work. I still got tears in my eyes. I was crying earlier, so it's, it's crazy to see stuff like that in the neighborhood you leave and you're not even safe, no way we go. Just put yourself in my shoes, like, you feel me? If somebody shooting and killing your child, how are you going to feel? And the father says he did speak with detectives. Investigators are telling us that uh, a weapon was recovered and no arrests have been made in this case so far. As for that 43-year-old man who was shot in the back, he was initially rushed to the hospital in critical condition, but we're told he has since been stabilized. Reporting live here in University City, Corey Davis, Channel 6 Action News. Yeah, man, so you see how they getting down out there in Philadelphia. Boy, that goes to show you the importance of having that pistol on you all the time. I carry every day, everywhere I go, right? If me and my girls having us a night out and, and we try to go in some place and they patting people down and you can't go in with your firearm, then we can't go in that spot. If you someone who been thinking about uh, purchasing you a gun to carry concealed, I suggest you do it. Get you some training, learn how to use your firearm properly, be efficient, and stay dangerous. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time. You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Default, I'll be hate.
yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rulin' about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tales. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you, cause I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Teen dies after trying to steal gun from selling an online gun sale in Crosby. A man was shot and killed Thursday after meeting up with another man in Crosby to complete an online gun sale, according to Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. This happened around 3 p.m. near the intersection of Crosby Lynchburg and Golf Pump Road. The sheriff said one of the men possibly attempted to rob the other man of the item that was being sold when the shooting happened. A 17-year-old male was shot and taken to the hospital by life flight where he later died. Investigation said the shooter stayed on the scene and told the responding deputies that he was trying to sell the pistol when the teen tried to steal it from him. During the struggle, the sailor told deputies that he shot the buyer, investigator said. Homicide investigators said they reviewed the surveillance video of the incident along with the Harris County District Attorney's Office. The case is being referred to a grand jury. The identity of the teen is not being released at this time, pending notification next to Ken. Law enforcement officials said if you do plan to conduct a sale or a transaction using online sites, it is important to keep safe and keep in mind to avoid potentially dangerous situations. You run up on a man and try to rob the man in a gun sale. I, I don't understand that shit for the life of me. It's a gun here, right? What is you doing, right? This is the wrong person to try to rob. Use your brain a little bit. Grand jury will hear the case of a deadly shooting during a gun sale at a gas station. Victor Jacoba has details and important tips to stay safe if you are doing a one-on-one -on -one in person transaction. Officials say two males, one of them a teenager, met up at a gas station in northeast Harris County to complete the sale of a pistol. Now they are investigating to try to figure out why that interaction turned deadly. Harris County Sheriff's deputies responded to shots fired at a gas station on Crosby Lynchburg Road near FM 1942 around 3 p.m. Thursday. In a statement released Friday, investigators say Sheriff's Patrol units found a 17-year-old male with gunshot wounds when they arrived at the gas station. He was taken by life flight to a hospital where he was later pronounced dead. The Sheriff's Office says the alleged shooter stayed on scene and spoke with deputies. He told law enforcement he had met the 17-year-old to sell him a pistol and that the 17-year-old allegedly attempted to steal a firearm. During that struggle, the alleged shooter said he fired the gun and hit the 17-year-old. The sheriff's office said they also reviewed security video and sent it over to the district attorney's office. A grand jury is now reviewing the incident. Houston police recommend the following if you are engaging in buying or selling items and meeting someone in person to complete the transaction. Do the transaction in a public space. Bring someone with you if you can. Perform the transaction during daylight hours. And don't invite someone to your home or go into someone else's home to complete the sale. Police also say to not display large amounts of cash. Use a proxy email prior to meeting in person instead of your personal email to avoid divulging personal information. Finally, the last tip from Houston police is to trust your instincts. If something feels uncomfortable or seems sketchy, it's best to avoid the situation. If you are the victim of a robbery, you're asked to call the Houston Police Department's robbery division or call Crime Stoppers. Yeah, man, so you see how they're getting down out there in Houston. Another one bites the dust. Texas stay with the smoke. These young dudes, I guess they don't watch the news and watch what's going on out here. People ain't with the shit and robbed and none of that shit right there going down, homeboy. It's just a simple gun sale, right? If you ain't had the money to buy the gun, then you don't need a gun. You don't need a gun anyway from by the way you acting. You just a teenager, man. You don't even know what life is yet. 17 years old, I got a football jersey in my closet older than you. Here you go throwing your life away over nothing, cuz. Ran up on this man and tried to take something, but took his ass to the county morgue instead. Man, this your boy Smoke Tales, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. 
Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Yeah, I heard it through the pipes line. Rules about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Man, today we got a funky one coming straight out of Miami. Miami Dade vehicle owner fatally shoots alleged car thief in confrontation. Suspect dead at the scene. Early this morning, the reported car theft turned deadly when a man in Northwest Miami Dade shot and killed an individual allegedly trying to steal his vehicle. Miami-Dade police arrived at the scene around 79th Avenue and Northwest 194th Street after receiving the call about a shooting. Officials described how the confrontation unfolded. The vehicle owner caught the subject in the act of breaking into his car. Then the owner intervened, which led to an altercation where the owner drew his gun and the suspect was fatally wounded. Following the altercation, the wounded car thief managed to drive away only to collide with several other vehicles before coming to a halt. A passenger in the car fled the scene and is currently being sought out. Witnesses in the Northwest Miami-Dade neighborhood witnessed the large police presence and the aftermath of the attempted theft and subsequent shoot. The incident left the area cornered off for several hours as investigators focused on the white car that wind up crashing amongst the other cars near the scene. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue responded to the situation and pronounced the carjacking suspect dead at the scene. His body discovered near the crashed vehicle. The identity of the deceased has not been released to the public and authorities are continuing the investigation. Looking for more information on the passenger that managed to escape. Anyone with information about this incident is encouraged to call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. Well, you know, Florida is uh, number two state right behind Texas with the most guns in the state and concealed carriers. You might as well be fucking around in Texas. It's almost the same shit. Down here, constitutional carry too. People ain't playing with you down here. And now at 10 o'clock, a suspected thief caught in the act trying to steal a car, but the owner did not have it, and the situation became deadly in the end. Seven's Olivia Venti is live in Northwest Miami-Dade, but what led to the gunfire? Olivia, good morning. Tavares, good morning. This car break-in gone bad. This is a very active investigation. Nearly eight hours after this happened, Miami-Dade police still here on scene. But I want to take you to video from earlier this morning. It all took place around 2.30 this morning. According to police, a man was trying to break into a car when the victim interrupted him. There was an altercation when the victim then shot the man trying to break into that car all around 2.30 this morning, as I said. This is on Northwest 79th Avenue and 192nd Street. The man that fled the scene in a car that was waiting for him, but as he fled, he crashed into several cars before coming to a stop. There was a passenger that did flee the scene, and they are at large, according to police, at this hour. Now, Detective Andre Martin with the Miami-Dade Police Department was just here not too long ago, and he has a message for our community, especially to those who might to encounter somebody trying to break into their car and what you should and should not do. Citizens who are um, who find themselves becoming the victim of a crime uh, not to confront these these subjects. Uh, it is very dangerous. You don't know how desperate these people are and you don't know how that situation might end. So we urge the community if, if you find yourself becoming the victim of a crime, do not confront the subjects. Please contact the police. 
Very scary. Once again, police are asking for your help in this investigation. If you heard anything or saw anything this morning, please let them know. My immediate crime stoppers 305 471 tips. But this is a very active investigation. As for the victim, the man who was his car was being broken into, unclear if he will be facing any charges. Just one of the many pieces that investigators are trying to put together to this very very, very complex puzzle this morning. But uh, crime scene tapes still up. So unfortunately, we cannot talk to neighbors just yet about how they have been affected as this car was fleeing the scene. We do know multiple cars were hit in the process. Um, a lot going on here, but we will be out here all morning trying to get the very latest. For now, we are live in Northwest Miami-Dade. Olivia DeVenti today. In yeah, so you see how they getting down in Miami-Dade, Florida, my home state. My hometown, you know how we getting down, down here. Florida is constitutional carry. We ain't playing like that. Homeboy got confronted by homeboy while he was breaking to his car. The vehicle owner ran up on him. Right now, he ain't automatically draw his weapon, obviously, because he would have just ran up on him and shot him. He said something to him, yo, what you doing, blah, blah, blah. Fool probably reached for something, acted a certain way, and got hit up. Right, then tried to jump in the, in the whip and drive off, crash. Dude who was with him in the car jumped out and left him right there on the concrete smelling. Right? That's supposed to be your homeboy. Your homeboy ain't trying to save you. He left you right there. Dead as a doughnut. You run around with these climbs. Homeboy out here trying to steal cars. But the only thing he stole was the first place in line to hell. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Before hate. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rules about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Harris County man kills alleged thief who stole barbecue pit from his home. A Houston area homeowner chased down a man who allegedly stole a barbecue pit from his property early Sunday, eventually shooting and killing the man for fear of his life, according to the Harris County authorities. The deadly shooting occurred around 2 a.m. in Northeast Houston on the 1500 block of Ralston Road in Kessington Oak Drive in Humble, roughly 25 minutes outside of downtown Houston. According to Sheriff Ed Gonzalez, investigators determined that the alleged robber who stole the barbecue pit from the home just a few minutes before he was killed, the homeowner chased down the man in his car and confronted him a short distance away from the original scene. When the property owner got out of his car and confronted the suspect, he said he believed the second man who was driving the vehicle had grabbed the weapon. So in fear for his safety, the homeowner fired several times at the suspect, striking and killing him. Harris County authorities confirmed the second person was in the car during the deadly shooting, but was not injured. The other person in the vehicle is not being charged at this time. The homeowner has been cooperating with the investigation and gave a detailed statement of the incident to the police. He has also not been charged at this time. After the investigation is complete, the case will be turned over to the Harris County District Attorney's Office to be presented for a grand jury. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Look like that man fucked around and found out. Boy, out there in Texas, they'll sure enough give you that work. Looked like brisket wasn't the only thing getting smoked out there in Harris County. It says a man is dead after stealing a barbecue pit from a home in Northeast Harris County. And according to their investigation, the homeowner went after the thief in his car and later shot and killed him. It happened early this morning off Ralston Road and Kennington Oak. ABC 13's Alex Bozargian joins us now live from that scene with what we've learned so far. Alex? 
Tom, right now, no one is facing charges, but that could change. Investigators say the homeowner jumped in his car after this guy got away with his barbecue pit. The two had some kind of confrontation in this area behind me, and that's when the homeowner shot several times at the suspect, hitting and killing him. The suspect, according to investigators, was in the car with someone else. We're told that person wasn't hurt, nor are they facing any charges at this time. The sheriff says the reason this guy shot the thief is because during their confrontation, he believed the thief had some kind of weapon. In a statement to investigators, the homeowner said he feared for his safety. The case is now headed over to a grand jury. ABC 13's legal analyst calls the case unique. One, because the homeowner did not shoot the suspect in the act, and two, because there was a witness. He says when it comes to his defense, he has two cards to play here. He's got the, hey, I was defending my property in the nighttime, and if, and if that doesn't work, I've got self-defense deadly force because I was under the impression that, that he had a gun, and so I thought my life was in danger. Uh, either one of those or both of those could work. With respect to when you're allowed to use deadly force um, to protect yourself, it comes down to what's reasonable. Shellis says if this happened during the day, this would be a very different story because Texas law allows you a lot less protection in that situation. He says this witness that was in the car with the suspect will likely go before the grand jury. Now that's after this gets turned over to the Harris County District Attorney's Office. Live tonight in Northeast Harris County, I'm Alex Bozarjian, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Yeah, man, so you see how they getting down out there in Harris County. Texas, boy, a constitution you carry all day. I could do a thousand stories on people getting burnt out there in Texas fucking around. Boy, 2024 look like the year of fuck around and find out. Bitches stealing your property and all that shit people work for, man. Right, you go through all this and lose your life over a barbecue pit. And Texas got good gun laws. Or you can defend your property at night, stand your ground, constitutional carry, all that good shit. People, I suggest you carry a firearm. You should stay on dollar time. The good guy with a gun. You know what I'm talking about? Homeboy came out there playing, trying to steal a barbecue pit in Harris County and got his ass sizzled like pork belly. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time. You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rules about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? It's your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Resident shoots at burglars. One suspect is dead and one suspect is in critical condition. A man reportedly shot two burglars during the Raleigh home invasion Wednesday, killing one. The survivor is being charged. Fernando Diffany, 29 years old, is charged with first degree murder, aggravated burglary, and aggravated robbery. His accomplice, Tadarius Allen, was killed when the resident of the apartment they allegedly broke into opened fire. Wednesday, Memphis police responded to a shooting at an apartment complex on Cedar Glen in Raleigh. A homeowner told officers he was asleep when he heard glass breaking in one of his bedrooms. Moments later, the suspects, Divini and Allen, were in his room with him. The homeowner yelled at the man, asking him why they were in his house. Allen walked toward him and he fired shots. Reports state that the two men ran back into the other bedroom to escape and the homeowner ran out his front door asking for help. The resident told police he saw Diffany pull Allen out of the window and believed they was going to harm him. He fired more shots before the two men got away. Both Diffany and Allen were shot. Allen did not survive. Diffany was taken into custody where he told the police that he and Allen 
had been breaking into apartments and stealing items. They were reportedly told that a television and Nike shoes were inside the apartment. Diffany was booked in the jail Wednesday. The resident who fired shots has not been charged according to the court and the jail records. Allen, your boy Allen and Diffany played theyself, breaking in the apartment for some goddamn Nike shoes and a TV and fuck around and got that work. Somebody trying to break in your home, you got a right to protect it, you know. Tonight, a man is facing a murder charge after police say he broke into a Raleigh apartment and the tenant shot and killed his alleged accomplice. Let's take a look at 29-year-old Fernando Davini. He is the man charged, police say, is charged with murder, even though he wasn't the one to pull the trigger. In fact, Davini was shot as well. Fox 13's Mandy Rock joins us live outside of the Cedarwood apartment complex tonight. Mandy, so how is all of this possible? Well, Darcy, it's because under Tennessee state law, a person can be charged with murder if while they're committing a crime, someone else is killed, even if they had no intention of killing anyone. Now, in this case, a tenant of these apartments shot Divini and the other man police say was breaking into the apartment with him. But Divini is the one facing consequences tonight. Yes, I am kind of surprised, but this is Memphis. An early morning burglary turned deadly. Police say two people broke into this apartment in Raleigh Wednesday. According to these court documents, the pair was after a TV and some Nikes. It's crazy how crime done changed. From my boyhood up to now, I mean, when I was a kid, you could sleep with your door open. The report says the burglars got into the apartment by breaking a bedroom window. A few seconds later, the report says the tenant confronted them and then shot at the burglars. Police say Tadarius Allen died from his injuries. They say his accomplice, 29-year-old Fernando Diveny, is now charged with his murder, even though he wasn't the one who killed Allen. I did not know that that was a law, that if you had a cohort and something happened, but now that's something else for criminals to think about. It reminds me of, if you can't do the crime if you can't do the time. It's known as the felony murder rule. It states you can be charged with murder if someone is killed while you are committing a crime like a burglary. Not everyone we spoke with agrees with this law. I feel like it's not fair because the homeowner wanted to shot him and not the friend. But most people we talked to agreed in this situation. The tenant who shot the suspect was not in the wrong. You got to protect your home. Absolutely. I'm not I'm not surprised behind it. I do the same thing. And along with first degree murder, Divini is also facing an aggravated burglary charge tonight. Darcy. So, Mandy, what about the tenant who shot the men? Will he be facing charges? Yeah, that's a good question, Darcy. We haven't heard of any charges against him at this point, but under Tennessee law, you do have the right to protect your property if you think there's an intimate risk. That is Fox Routine's Mandy Rock reporting live tonight out of Raleigh. Thank you so much, Mandy. Yeah, man. So you see how they getting down out there in Raleigh. Memphis, which is in Tennessee, that's constitutional carry all day. These dudes out here breaking their houses for TVs and Nike shoes. That's preposterous, right? How you gonna risk your life for some goddamn Nike shoes and a TV around here with the home invasions? And then you gonna come in the man room and then when he tell you to get out, you approach the man and he set your ass on fire, right? Let it rain on you. Well, I suggest everybody should carry, boy, these days. If, if you can carry legally, I suggest you carry legally, man. Shit real in the field out here. Your boy Allen got his power turned off, and your boy Divinity checked his ass into a prison cell for life. Well, he gonna just do it. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rulings about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. 
Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tales. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Statesboro police investigate apartment shooting that left one dead and two injured. One person is dead and two others are injured after a shooting at a student apartment complex in Statesboro Monday night. According to the Statesboro Police Department, officers responded to Cambridge and Pires Apartments at 5.30 p.m. in the 100 block of Lanier Drive and Paulson Stadium for shots fired. Upon arrival at the apartment complex, police found an adult man with gunshot wounds and began rendering aid. Bullock County EMS arrived shortly after but determined that the man was deceased. Police also learned of two other victims who arrived at East Georgia Regional Medical Center with non-life-threatening gunshot wounds. After the initial investigation, detectives determined that the two surviving victims, both men, had driven from the apartment complex and that they and the deceased victim were connected. Police say that it appears as though a dispute between the individuals resulted in gunfire, according to the release. Sound like to me somebody tried to backdoor somebody. Boy, that's why you gotta be careful of the company you keep and keep your head on the swivel, cause everybody ain't built the same. First and four, one person is dead and two others hurt after a shooting near the campus of Georgia Southern University. It happened yesterday at the Cambridge The Pines Apartments. That's in the 100 block of Lanier Drive in Statesboro. WSAB's Kaylee Fedco went to Statesboro today to find out more about the shooting. She joins us now with what she's learned about what's led to the gunfire. Yeah, that's right, Ben. I'm here at the Cambridge at the Pines apartment where, like you mentioned, this all went down yesterday. I met with Statesboro's chief of police who said everyone who engaged in this shootout knew each other, and it appears to have been a drug deal gone wrong. Statesboro chief of police Mike Broadhead telling me around 530 yesterday, a group of three men, all college age, drove to Cambridge and the Pines apartments together. One of them got out, went into an apartment, and then shot at the other two in in the car upon his return. At least one person inside the car returned fire, killing the man outside who police say they believe was the instigator. 5.30 Monday evening, tragedy strikes at the Cambridge and Pines apartment complex just as classes are winding down at Georgia Southern University close by. Statesboro police say three men, all college age, shot at each other. One died and two drove themselves to the hospital with gunshot wounds. Statesboro Police Chief Mike Broadhead says the violence was drug related and the three men knew each other. First of all, we have this insatiable appetite for drugs, right? So there's such a demand for drugs that's driving, fueling most of the violence, right? Insatiable is a word Chief Broadhead used time and time again, telling me this shooting is emblematic of a problem not only in Statesboro, but across the country. This is the piece that we can't figure out as a, as a society, right? Why, um, you know, I've heard as much as 80% of the world's drugs, illegal drugs, are flowing into the United States. We're not finding warehouses full of moldy drugs, right? They're all getting used. So what is driving this insatiable urge to use illegal drugs? And, and we got to try to figure that piece out. Though Chief Broadhead says the small town of Statesboro is shaken from the deadly shooting, he tells me it should find comfort in the fact the shooting was not targeting random people. And in Statesboro, when shootings happen, they rarely do. None of this violence is random. Right. Um, we always are very concerned that that a good citizen is going to randomly get, you know, in the middle of something like this. But but just about all the violence that we see is interpersonal it's between people who have some kind of an association. But he has a message for the young people that make up a large part of the community. Guns are not the answer to conflict. When you bring a gun into some kind of, you know, aggressive sort of situation, it's so lethal that like it, you know, once you press the trigger, you can't take that back. Chief Broadhead says no criminal charges have been filed and he doesn't know if they will be because so far this appears to be a case of self-defense. Everything is in the early stages of investigation. Reporting live in Statesboro, Kaylee Fedco, WSAV News 3 on your side. Kaylee, thank you. Yeah, man, so you see how they getting down out there in Statesboro. Homeboy tried to back door him, went inside, came back out the house, open fire on the nigga, right? <laughs> 
You come right back outside the house and open fire on them. Lucky you ain't know what you was doing too much, because when they returned fire, you took the parking lot temperature challenge. Yeah, you see, no charges wasn't filed, right? Because everybody has the right to defend themselves, even though it was a drug deal. Homeboy came back out busting and got bust on, right, around here fucking around. They say they knew this man, but obviously they ain't know this man too well. Or you got to keep your grass cut low. There's snakes out there in your lawn. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rumors about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? It's your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Man may have been breaking in the home when 14-year-old shot him to death. A man who was knocking on doors in East Harris County, probably trying to break in the homes, was shot and killed by a 14-year-old boy on Thursday morning, according to investigators. The Harris County Sheriff's Office responded to a call for a service at a home in the 1400 block of Brownsville Street just before 7 a.m. At the scene, they found the man who had been shot and killed. According to Sheriff Gonzalez, the man approached the home and was messing with the front door. Gonzalez said it was unclear if he actually unlocked and opened the door, if he was just turning the doorknob back and forth, trying to get inside. A 14-year-old boy who was home alone inside the residence became alarmed and grabbed the pistol, walked to the doorway, Gonzalez said. He saw a man he didn't recognize and reportedly fired five to six shots from inside the home, striking the man. Investigators also said the man was familiar with the homeless outreach team in the area. They said they had had contact with him in the past. The teenage boy and his family are cooperating with the investigators. The HCSO said they have the right to protect their home. They have the right to feel safe in their home. Gonzalez said, ironically, there's a sign on the gate that basically said something to that effect that intruders will be met with force. So I think it was very clear on the front gate. The investigation into what exactly happened is still ongoing. If you ask for my opinion, this young man is a stud. Had his big boy pants on. County deputies are investigating after they say a teenager shot and killed a suspected burglar. This happened before school this morning on Brownsville Street in the Cloverleaf area. And new this afternoon, a neighbor who witnessed the shooting is sharing surveillance video with our Michelle Choi. According to the Harris County Sheriff's Office, minutes before the shooting, two calls were made to 911 by neighbors with similar reports, saying that a man was trying to break into their homes, kicking on doors and requesting money. That man, according to next door neighbor Araceli Herrera, was captured on her security camera early this morning. As soon as he comes out the ditch, I'm like, this guy has some, like, I've never seen him before. He has some weird behavior and I, it, I was on alert. She says she kept an eye on him through her window as he walked over to her neighbor's property and began knocking on the front door, pacing and peeking through a window before returning to the door. Concerned about the 14 year old boy who lives inside, she says she called her neighbor who had just left to take his younger siblings to school. I already knew and figured at this point that he was, you know, there by himself. She says as the man continued to try and get inside, that's when she claimed she saw the teen open the door and fire multiple shots. I walked back away from the window and I'm like in shock. According to Sheriff Ed Gonzalez, the alleged suspect, a man in his late 20s to early 30s, died on scene and the teen was not hurt. It's a very traumatic situation out here when you're talking about a 14-year-old having a used deadly force um, and in protection of himself and, and his 
property. The sheriff said they believe this was likely an attempted burglary, given the man had on a pair of gloves and backpack, which he says is indicative of someone trying to break in. They also believed he may have been homeless. As for Araceli, the scary situation hits close to home. Her 14-year-old daughter and her son were home when the shooting unfolded. If my daughter was in that situation, Honestly, I would be happy that my daughter was safe and the other guy, which I don't know what his intentions were. She says she felt for her teenage neighbor who investigators told us was cooperating. I mean, just me seeing it, I'm in shock. I still haven't been able to stop shaking. So with a 14 year old in, in his position and having taken that action, I mean, I can't imagine what, you know, he's feeling. Michelle Choi, KHOU 11 News. Yeah, man. So you see how they getting down out there in Harris County. Houston, Texas, boy, you know how Texas getting down. They ain't even playing out there. You seen the sign on the gate, I'd rather have a gun in my hand than the cop on the phone. Uh, that young man was already trained with that hammer. They hadn't already went over the scenario in the house with his parents or whoever. He knew what time it was. Outstanding job. I think that was an outstanding job, young man. You did what you're supposed to do. Creeping around the bitch house, peeping in windows and jiggling doorknobs. They say the man was homeless, but now his ass got somewhere to sleep for good. Man, this your boy Smoke Tales, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tales. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you, cause I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. A Oklahoma woman shot and killed the man who had broken into an apartment in the town of Bartersville, according to the police. The woman told the Bartersville Police Department she did not know the suspect, identified as a 23-year-old man. Police said the woman called 911 on the morning of January 12th and reported that someone was breaking into an apartment on the 1800 block of South Killer Avenue. While officers was on the way, the woman said she had shot the intruder. According to the police, the woman was justified in using deadly force and protecting herself inside her home. Officers arrived at the scene and found the man at the threshold of the residence with a gunshot wound. And they administered aid until emergency medical personnel arrived. Police wrote on Facebook the man was transported to the local hospital where he later succumbed to his injuries. The neighbor says she was glad the homeowner was able to defend herself and hopes that other burglars would think twice before breaking into someone's home. Yeah, you, you should hope they think twice. That's why you should arm yourself. It's always good to have a pistol at the crib. You gotta have some type of home defense weapon. You can't be out here asleep, even if you don't walk around with it on you. Carry it on your person, which I recommend that you do, but at least have one at the house, man. All these home invasions and shit going on, especially if you're a female, lucky she had the blizzard. That's why she was able to defend herself and do work. A man was shot and killed after Bartlesville police say he was trying to force his way into an apartment. You're watching Fox 23 News at 6. I'm Shay Rossi. Glad you're with us tonight. I'm Sarah Whaley. There have been no arrests in this case and probably will not be any arrests, according to police. Fox 23's crime and safety reporter John Sebas learned the woman who police say fired the shots likely did it in self-defense. It's new at 6. Police call it a tragic situation overall. They say someone was trying to break in someone's apartment here at Grace Manor and was shot and found right inside what they call the threshold of that door and would later be taken to the hospital and die. Early Friday morning in Bartlesville, police say they were called to a shooting at the Grace Manor Apartments. I've probably seen one or two of these over my 11 years here. Police say a woman shot a man trying to break into her home. We're still investigating the situation, uh, make sure it's as it appears to be and 
and going from there. Bartlesville police say the person died shortly after. The individual was transported uh, to the hospital and uh, later, um, you know, died due to his injuries. Captain Daniel Elkins says the evidence is pointing to self-defense. It's very unfortunate, you know, anytime, you know, there's loss of life, you know, that's that's sad, especially for the, the, the young person involved that had to do that. It's a lot for them to process. Um, so it's, it's, it's tragic, but it's our job to kind of find the actual details of the situation and document it and send it up for legal process. That Life on Keeler Street resumed to its quiet Friday afternoon while police continued to work the case. At this point, it's kind of what it's looking like, but you know, it's too early for us to make an absolute ruling on that. And that would ultimately be up to the district attorney. I asked police about the person who broke into that apartment and asked them if they knew that person. And they say they had had contact with him in the past over some domestic situation. But this is an ongoing investigation. Police still have a lot of work to do. Stay with Fox 23 for the latest updates. Covering news that matters. John Acebus, Fox 23 News. Yeah, man. So you see how they getting down out there in Oklahoma, Bartersville. Little mama had to peel his cat back, man. All women should carry a gun on them, just in case a dude want to fly off the handle with the domestic shit, right? Because you can't fight them physically. But that pistol, that shit equal the playing field. First in the story, they say, she says she didn't know the dude. Then she did know the dude. Some young cat, 23 years old, man. Listen, y'all young dudes, man, ain't no pussy worth dying over. Y'all going to game wars and going through all that shit. It, it, if a female don't want you, she just don't want you. You see what happened to the home team? He couldn't keep it moving and got his ass sent to Funky Town. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. They just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? It's your boy Smoke Tails. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. 18 year old killed in Orlando home invasion after resident opened fire. An 18 year old was shot dead and another person was injured Monday in the botched home invasion in the apartment complex in the Mercy Drive neighborhood, according to the Orlando Police Department. Officers responded to the Jernigan Gardens around 1.14 p.m. after reports of a shooting, investigators determined the confrontation resulted when an apartment resident opened fire at a suspect. An unsigned OPD news release sent on Tuesday said the killed teen was identified as Kevin Hodges, who investigators said was found in a breezeway. A second person who police haven't identified was found inside an apartment and is in stable condition after being taken to the hospital. The OPD didn't confirm Hodges' role in the home invasion, nor did the department immediately respond to the email seeking clarification. No other injuries were reported. Man, I don't know what's wrong with you young dudes out here these days. Right? Every time I turn around, one of y'all ass getting clapped out here playing. Right? He running up in somebody's crib home invasion. Trying to rob somebody. Ain't standing no mansion. Right? You ain't finna come up on no money. You finna be set for life living in Aruba no goddamn well. You around here robbing people that look just like you. And wonder why we can't come up as a people. You jits out here tripping. See where I got this man here in the graveyard. Watch 2 News starts now with breaking news. All right, we have a breaking update to a story that we've been following since yesterday. Police now say a home invasion led to two people getting shot at an Orlando apartment complex. This shooting happened at the Jernigan Gardens Apartments on Mercy Drive, just north of West Colonial. West 2's Tony Adkins joins us live now outside police headquarters with the latest information. And Tony, we just found out the victim killed was just 18 years old. 
Yeah, just so young. And this information just came in 45 minutes ago. Police initially said they believed three people were shot, but now we know that there were two people shot. I want to show you some video from the scene. Police say this started as a home invasion, and they also say that 18-year-old Kevin Dwayne Hodges was killed in the shooting, which happened at 1.14 p.m. Tuesday afternoon. A second person inside the apartment was also shot, but police say they are okay. Again, police say they believe this started as a home invasion, which led to the resident, the person inside the house, shooting at the person breaking in. I spoke with Marcus Brown, who's the CEO of I Hope Mentoring. He also grew up on Mercy Drive, and he says it hurts hearing what happened yesterday afternoon. It just was heartbreaking to hear just like, wow, again, like something happened again. Like, when, when will it stop? It's unacceptable because, you know, for the, the most important thing is death. Um, we're losing lives, um, and we're losing lives on both spectrums. We're using, we're losing young lives, young male lives, young female lives. Now, after Hodges was killed in the shooting, police say they don't believe that any other suspects are out there. For now, reporting live at OPD headquarters, Tony Atkins, West 2 News. Yeah, man. So you see how they getting down out there in Orlando, Florida, my state, where I reside at, constitutional carry all day, right? Ain't nobody playing with these young cats out here trying to rob and going through all this dumb shit like even to come up on a million dollars. Boy, the house is lacking structure. You young dudes need an older dude in, in, in your life, man. Show you how this shit go, because, boy, I don't know who's showing y'all this shit that's going on out here these days. If there's any young dudes watching this video, then you can learn from this, man. Stop bullshitting with yourself and find something to do. Go get you a career, live a life, get you a lady and chill out somewhere. Young Jit Hodges came out here playing with himself, trying to run up in the bitch house and ran straight to hell. Man, this your boy Smoke Tales, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rumors about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tales. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Call Jack and investigation ends in crash outside Lansdowne Police Station. An upper Darby carjacking ended with a crash outside a police building in Lansdowne Borough, Delaware County, earlier Friday morning. Following the crash, the front courtyard area of Lansdowne Borough Hall had uprooted plants, crash street signs, overturned bricks, and muddy tire tracks. The scenario ended in Lansdowne, but started a few minutes in Upper Darby, where police say a car accident turned into an attempted carjacking and a shooting. Upper Darby police say about 12.30 a.m., a white Kia side swiped another car on the 300 block of Richfield Road. The victim followed the car looking to have a few words with the driver, when they stopped at a light at the intersection of Marshall and Hampton Roads. That's when the rear passenger got out and confronted him and tried to carjack his vehicle and there was an exchange of gunfire. One of those shots hit the alleged carjacker in the back and authorities say he jumped back into the kill which sped off. A upper Derby police officer heard the gunfire and called for backup. That's when the driver of the Kia lost control and crashed. Police said there were three people inside the white Kia. One is the carjacking suspect who got shot, a 20-year-old man. He was taken to the hospital and listed in stable condition. A 15-year-old driver who was from Derby Borough who was caught by the police. 
the kid they were riding in was reported stolen. Y'all jit still riding around here in stolen cars? Still riding around in splats? What type of female wanna be riding around with a bum ass nigga riding around in a stolen car? Right? I don't know how y'all vibing up there in Philly. Right? But that shit played out. 2024. Yeah, it's catching that smoke. A car accident, attempted carjacking, shootout at all in a crash, all happening in about 15 minutes in Delaware County early this morning. One suspect still on the run tonight. Action News reporter Toronto Thomas live in Lansdowne to explain how this all unfolded. Toronto. Well, Rick, you can literally see how this crash happened just by looking at the scene. I want to walk you through the car jumping the curb, going through those bushes, and then look in the mud. Those are tire tracks going through this area of the courtyard. Police say this all started with an attempted carjacking. The center of our town, and now it's destroyed. Shredded shrubs and street signs. We also have, there's some pedestrian uh, controls that were knocked out. It's the aftermath of a criminal crash at Lansdowne Borough Hall, right in front of Police Chief Ken Rutherford's office. The vehicle lost control and split between these two poles and came to rest here. The scenario ended here, but it started a few minutes away in Upper Darby, where police say a car accident turned into an attempted carjacking and a shooting. It's a lot of turns to it. Upper Darby police say at about 12.30 a.m., a white Kia sideswiped another car in the 300 block of Richfield Road. The victim followed that car, looking to have a word with the driver when they were stopped at a light at the intersection of Marshall and Hampton Road. That's when the rear passenger got out and confronted him and tried to carjack his vehicle. And there was an exchange of gunfire. One of those shots hit the alleged carjacker in the back. He jumped back into the Kia, which sped off. An Upper Darby officer heard the gunfire and called for backup. They did try to stop the car, and the car would not stop, so they were pursuing the car to try and stop the vehicle. That's when the driver of the Kia lost control and crashed. Police say there were three people inside the Kia. One is the carjacking suspect who got shot, a 20-year-old man from Colwyn. He was taken to the hospital and is listed as stable. There was also a 15 year old driver who is from Darby Borough. Police caught him, but they did not catch a third person who got away. The Kia they were riding in had been reported stolen. The Kias and the Hyundais are stolen all day, every day. Meantime, it could take months to clean up this damage. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, it's a shame. That's what some residents said as they passed by and looked at this damage. Now, the victim of that alleged carjacking, a 38-year-old man from Upper Darby, police don't yet know if he fired the shot that hit that alleged carjacker. They're still sorting that all out, but they do say that the victim is licensed to carry a weapon. Meantime, the Upper Darby Police Department is working with the district attorney's office to determine charges in the case, so there is a lot for them to sort through. We are live in Lansdowne, Toronto Thomas, Channel 6 Action News. Christy? Okay, Toronto, thank you. Yeah, man, so you see how they getting down out there in Philadelphia. You already know how Philly do. These jits still running around here stealing cars. 115, 120. The 20 year old supposed to set an example for the 15 year old. Tell him, man, listen here, man, that shit, they ain't about nothing, bro. Right? Trying to get some legal money, chill, live the good life, experience life, travel, do different shit. This bum shit y'all jits on, right? It's around here stealing kids. Just to ride around in. So go to jail, get a charge. When you get older, you might want to change your life, but you fucking shit up right now if you live to get older. At the rate you niggas going, shh, don't look like it. These jits out here tripping, stealing cars to joyride. Your ass almost took a ride to see Lucifer. Man, this your boy Smoke Tales, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. The fuck out here hate. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rules about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine. 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 You never catch me without mine. 
Yo, what's good, man? It's your boy Smoke Tales. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Mother shoots home intruder to protect three children. Sheriff commands her bravery. Deputies say a Mississippi woman protected her three children by shooting a man who allegedly broke into her family's home wielding a knife. Carroll County deputies received a call for help Monday from a woman's husband who was at work in Greenwood. He told deputies that a knife wielding man was attempting to enter his home in the Gravel Hill area while his wife and three children were hiding in the closet. The husband then described the suspect and the vehicle he was in, a 2500 GMC pickup truck. When deputies arrived at the home, the suspect identified as 44-year-old Steve Lamar Goss Jr. had already driven away according to the press release. Deputies say before Goss left, he drove his truck into the home's dining room after he could not kick down the front door. While this was happening, the mother and three children hid in the closet designated as the family safe room press release says when Goss found the family he entered the closet still holding the knife according to the press release the mother then shot him in the arm and Goss fled other deputies responded to the scene found the vehicle with matching the description given by the husband they attempted a felony traffic stop in the parking lot of the Aces store Goss ran into the business and the deputies gave chase he was arrested inside the store and taken to the hospital to be treated for his gunshot wound Goss was booked into the Carroll Montgomery Regional Correctional Facility on four counts of attempted murder, one count of burglary. He was already out on felony bond in possession of a weapon by a felon. Boy, I tell you the importance, the importance of having a gun inside the house is the whole thing, right? If she wouldn't have had no gun, I don't know what she would have did. This man was coming into the house with a knife and drove through the whole front room. But lucky she had the pistol on her. That's what saved her and her family. Now this story has made national headlines. A Carroll County mother shoots an intruder in a desperate attempt to protect her three children. This happened Monday at a house in the Gravel Hill community. The suspect actually drove his truck into the woman's living room after he wasn't able to kick in the front door. WTVA's Chris Knowles talked to the Carroll County Sheriff about what happened. He's joining us live in Greenwood with an update. I'm actually live in Greenwood. I'm right here at the intersection of Highway 82 and 430. This is the road that Carroll County deputies came. They came up Highway 82 and over through 430 to get to this wild investigation. Sheriff Clinton Walker tells me that he interviewed the mother for the first time last night. He says it was so emotional and she was so trauma stricken that when she recalled the moments, you could see the hives coming up her neck. He says she, he interviewed her and here's what she had to say. Most 30 years of law enforcement is the most chilling um, events I've ever listen to Carroll County Sheriff Clint Walker talked to us about his emotional interview with the mother. The woman and her three kids were under attack by a man who tried to kill them first with his pickup truck, then with a knife. They were sitting at the kitchen table. They could see him approaching with no shirt on and a large knife um, trying to kill the dog in the yard. Then he got further close to the house. It was at this point when the mother sends her three young children to their emergency safe room. And then at that point tried to enter the home by kicking in the door and was unable to breach the door. Um, that's when she entered the safe room with the children. Sheriff Walker says the family started praying and reading scriptures. They then heard a loud boom. They could hear the crash and he could hear him kick in the master bedroom door. She could hear him kick in the master bedroom bathroom and she knew the next door was the, the closet. The woman's husband was at work in another city. He tells his wife to shoot the intruder if he tries to get inside the closet. She shoots the intruder three times. She barricaded the door with her feet and pointed two guns at the door. And she said that God gave her a voice that she had never said before. In the loudest decibel that could come out of a person's mouth, she described it. She said, I command you to get out of my home in God's name. Her husband and deputies rushed to the house. The man identified as Steve Goss Jr. left in his truck. 
Sheriff Walker says Goss parked his truck near this gas pump right here. He then ran inside of the AC's grocery in Delhi. He went inside this door right here, and that's where deputies were able to arrest him inside of the sitting area near the kitchen. Goss is in the Carroll County Jail. He's charged with burglary and four counts of attempted murder. We're going after him with everything we've got to make sure he's not come back to Carroll County. Yeah, man, so you see how they getting down out there in Carroll County. I'm glad she had the pistol on her. I'm not too much of a religious person, but you know, if they want to thank God, that's on them. That's all right, all to the good. But boy, lucky she had that gun on her. Because boy, other than that, it was going to be a problem. This man came in there with a knife. His children in there, he trying to kill the dog in the yard and all. This man, they bumped this motherfucker head, man. I tell my girlfriend, boy, if I ain't here, boy, it's right here. I taught her how to use it already, so she know what time it is, right? And that should show all you ladies out there you need to carry. You should carry every day more than men do because y'all more vulnerable than we is. This man here came in the house tripping. Lucky she had that pistol on her. Should have sent his ass to the upper room, but I take the hospital stretcher for now. Man, this your boy Smoke Tales, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Our top story this morning, new overnight, a deadly shooting after a concealed carry license holder opens fire on someone opening fire on him. Fuck with hate. Yeah, I heard it through the pipeline. Rulings about how they gon' rob me in the night time. For real, they just waiting for the right time. But guess what? You never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine. Yo, what's good, man? This your boy Smoke Tales. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you got it on you because I got it on me. You know how we getting down on this end. Police question woman in deadly southeast Atlanta shooting. Atlanta police homicide detectives interviewed a woman after police say she shot and killed the man at an apartment complex near the Interstate 20 on Tuesday evening. It happened before 4 p.m at the Capitol Gateway Apartments located at 172 Logan Street Southeast. According to the Atlanta police, officers were responding to reports of shots fired and a burglary. They arrived at the scene to find the man shot dead in the apartment. The woman who police believe is the shooter and lived at the home was also located at the scene. Investigators later said the man and the woman knew each other. It seemed like the man was trying to enforce his way into the apartment of the woman and the altercation led into the shooting incident. Investigators believe the woman opened fire when he tried to get inside the apartment. Police will only identify the man as being in his 30s. The names of the man and the woman have not been released. No word on the woman facing any charges or if detectives believe she acted in self-defense. The name of the man and the woman have not been released. Here we go, another example right here where I think all females should tote the pistol on, right? Boy, cause uh, psh, apparently you can't tell dudes it's over out here without them flipping their shit. So I suggest you females keep the blizzy on. As soon as a bitch get out of line, give it to them. Atlanta where homicide investigators are on the scene of a fatal shooting at an apartment complex in southeast Atlanta. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Spencer. I'm Courtney Bryant. Tonight we know a man is dead and police have detained a woman. Let's get out to Fox 5's Rob DiRienzo who is live at the apartment complex where all of this happened. Rob, what are you finding out? Courtney Russ, good evening to you both. Well, detectives with Atlanta Police's Homicide Division just wrapped up their work here on scene a little while ago. We know a man is dead, and now police have in custody the woman they believe pulled the trigger. I want to show you what the scene was looking like a little more than an hour ago when we first got here. Crime scene tape enveloped the development where all of this went down. This is inside the Capitol Gateway Apartments here off of Logan Street. Cops say they got the call before 4 p.m. We initially heard from police that they thought this might have been a burglary turned down deadly. But just a little while ago, the homicide commander on scene told us they now believe the man who was shot and the suspected uh, shooter knew each other. 
a dispute between acquaintances, uh, male and female, they're trying to establish their uh, their relationship with each other, but they do know each other. Uh, it seems like one was trying to uh, appear to force entry into the apartment, and that led to an uh, altercation that ultimately led to a shooting incident. That lieutenant says the man who has died was in his 30s, and he says they believe the woman opened fire when he tried to get inside the apartment. At this point, it's not clear if the woman will be charged or if police believe she acted in self-defense. But back out here live, you can see that at least one cruiser still on scene. Again, that woman is at APD headquarters, but it's not clear if she will be charged at this point. Of course, there are still a lot of unanswered questions on this one. We're going to continue to work our sources here on the ground, bringing the very latest on air and online. Live in Southeast Atlanta, Rob DiRienzo, Fox 5 News. Yeah, man. So you see how they getting down out there in Atlanta, Georgia, boy. Constitutional carry. Just like Florida. They say they still got to investigate. The investigation is over. We all, we know what happened. We just heard what happened. He tried to break into the house, force his way in. Obviously, he was trying to take some pussy or something. Right? He got just what he just deserves. Fucking around. Females, y'all need to carry the strap, man, at all times. Especially if you fucking with some crab ass dude you don't even hardly know. Let this dude right here be an example. He tried to break in a bitch crib, probably trying to smell a bitch drawers. Now the only thing he's smelling is the skin on his ass burning in hell. Man, this your boy Smoke Tails, man. Until next time, you never catch me without mine. Without mine, 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 you never catch me without mine.